Covered call ETFs have a major problem. It all comes down to this chart. Okay, so let me explain. Covered call ETFs are very popular funds that attract a lot of interest from income oriented investors. And the reason for this is because these ETFs often have unbelievably high dividend yields. I'm talking between 10 to 12%, which is insane. And for those who don't know, covered call ETFs are funds that sell call options against the underlying asset that they own in order to collect a premium, which is then distributed to investors in the form of a dividend. And these funds are very popular, especially during bear markets. Why? Well, simply put, the dividend yield they provide essentially acts as a counterweight to the dropping stock price. So when you look at ETFs like QYLD or XYLD and compare the total returns with major ETFs like QQQ, you see that they have managed to outperform the overall index in a bear market. But if you just look at total returns, which is calculated by reinvesting dividends, you don't get the full picture. If you look at price returns, which does not include dividends reinvested, but rather only stock price, well, the ETFs tank just like the underlying index that they track. But you see, these ETFs have a chance of significantly underperforming in a bear market as well. And this is where things get really interesting and rather concerning. For ETFs like QYLD or XYLD to succeed, it all depends on the type of bear market. So let me explain with some examples. So we will be using QYLD for this example. Now QYLD is the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. And this ETF sells at the money covered calls against the NASDAQ 100 index, the QQQ, in order to generate income. So if the QQQ drops by 10% in a year and QYLD manages to generate a 10% dividend yield by selling covered calls, then its overall performance should be flat, whereas the QQQ would lose 10%. And that is essentially what happened during the bear market of 2022. The QQQ lost around 33%, but QYLD's total loss was only 19%, and QYLD has a dividend yield of 12.6%. So 33 minus 12.6 would give you 20.4%, which is almost the returns of QYLD for 2022. But like I said before, this situation can change drastically depending on the type of bear market. And I'm specifically talking about the W-shaped bear markets. So what do I mean by this? Well, I mean that it's probably a good time to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much. Let's continue. A W-shaped bear market represents a particular pattern of market behavior characterized by two significant declines in stock prices separated by a short-lived recovery or rally in between. So the initial decline in stock prices represents the first leg of the W. Then after the first decline, there may be a short period of recovery or rally where the stock prices temporarily go back up. Then immediately afterwards, there'll be another significant decline followed by another short-term recovery. I think you get the point. <laughs> and this isn't uncommon behavior. You can see this happening with stocks like Apple. Apple has been in a W-shaped pattern since the beginning of April of 2022. So why is this dangerous? Well, let's keep going using the previous example. So each month, QYLD sells monthly covered calls exactly at the money, which essentially means that the fund is capping its upside growth completely. So if QQQ has a current price at the beginning of the month at $300, then QYLD will sell a covered call with a one month expiration at the money at the strike price of $300 and we'll collect, let's say, $10 in premium. And by the way, for anyone that is confused about this concept, don't worry, I'll be making another video that goes through options trading in detail. So that $10 premium collected is the maximum amount that the fund is able to gain during that month, no matter what happens. So now let's assume that there's a current W-shaped market pattern and QQQ takes a 15% dive going from $300 to $255 within a month. Then immediately the next month, the stock recovers back up to $300. But then the fund takes another 15% dive all the way down to $255 and then recovers again back up to $300. So over the course of four months, QQQ has been flat with no returns. And again, this is hypothetical, but flat or sideways trading markets can resemble this type of pattern. Now, during that period, QYLD's performance is much different. So starting from the beginning, QYLD sells a call at the $300 strike price with a one month expiration and collects the $10 premium. And the next month, when QQQ drops to $255, 
QLD sells another call with a one month expiration at the money with a strike price of $255 and collects another $10 premium. But now as the QQQ recovered back to $300 that month, QLD misses out on that entire short term gain because of the covered call. So rather than gaining back 17%, the fund would still be down by 13%. And this calculation includes the premium collected. And now QLD sells another call option with a one month expiration at $300 and collects another $10 premium. And subsequently, QQQ's value falls by 15%. And now QLD will be down by 27%. So essentially what you have on your hands is a chart that looks like this. With the returns of QQQ and QLD side by side, you could see a major issue. And translating that to a graph gives you a much better visualization. This flat recovery is a major problem. So if this pattern continued for a couple more cycles, then you could see QLD eroding down more than 50% in a matter of a few months, while QQQ mostly traded back and forth and stayed relatively flat. Now, apart from this, there is of course the obvious downside to covered call ETFs, which is the lagging growth. So if the market did not behave in a W-shaped pattern, but rather in a V-shaped recovery, which we've seen a lot of, essentially the same thing would happen. The value of QLD will erode less on the downward trend because the downward volatility is being softened out by its dividend yield. But the moment the market starts to recover, those covered calls that are sold at the money will completely demolish your funds as you will miss out on every aspect of recovery. And you can see that clearly with this graph right here that compares the price of QQQ and QLD side by side during a recovery period. That is why covered call ETFs like QLD or XYLD can be very dangerous. So instead, it's ideal to invest in covered call ETFs that sell out of the money calls. And the reason I say that is because out of the money covered calls still allow room for capital appreciation if the market were to recover suddenly. Therefore, it doesn't cap a fund's growth potential completely, although it does limit it, just not as much. There's also another solution to this problem. You see, there are funds that sell covered calls, but they do not use 100% of their portfolio, so they can still participate in upside growth. Funds like DIVO, which is the Amplify Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Also, it's really important to remember that a lot of funds work off the VIX, which is the volatility index. Many popular funds like JEPI or JEPQ adjust how far out of the money they decide to sell the call options depending on market volatility. So when the VIX is higher, that translates to more premium because of the increased volatility. So these funds are able to set strike prices that are even further out of the money while still collecting significant premium. As a result, they managed to collect premium in a much smarter and calculated way. So if you want to utilize a covered call strategy, pay close attention to the VIX. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!